tenacity and severity. The Sephardi and the Ashkenazi are later supporters of Khazarians. They support the Khazarians because the war between the Moors and the Christian, they had nowhere to turn. And if you go look at Dr. Clark, John Henry Clark gives you a good, a good description when he asks the question, exactly what is a Semite? He asked another lecture exactly what is a Jew? Where do they come from? Yeah. Which Juanita, which is going to where I'm born with this. So <clears throat> MS thirteen Mexican Mafia, um the Latin Kings, Latin Counts, um, some Spanish Cobras, that's Mexicans. They all wanted me to determine how do we balance the Mexican economy so that the people not suffering. So I got enough families out of the Spanish-speaking area now that recognize what's taking place in, on the world stage. And so now I have to go into the connection of um, what's taking place and what is the remedy for the Spanish-speaking people that live in those islands that have been subjugated and oppressed? And so I came to study the Mexican economy, and I was utterly blown away. In Mexico, um, minerally speaking, Mexico is in the top 20 wealthiest nations on earth. Thank you, Morgan. I love you too, sweetie. And all of the mineral wealth is either restricted from being utilized by embargo stemming from prior wars or is being capitalized by private corporate interests that don't share the wealth with the locals. One of the things that we're going to do in the U.N., when we start to put all this stuff back in order is in the lines that's already established as lines of demarcation. There's no sense of changing them because people are familiar. So um, what do we do? This is what you do. In the geography, in the lines of demarcation, if you extract the wealth from that land, you must first satisfy the needs of the people in that barrier before you can count a profit. In other words, out of your gross take, your net cannot be assessed <coughs> until you have paid your due portion to support the local communities. Then what is the remainder the company takes? And that way, there's no poverty and the company will end up in the long run having a more supportive community a more supportive group of people that's living their best life that can add value at every turn to um, <clears throat> tell them don't give up their mineral rights. If, if they don't do nothing else, do never give up your mineral rights. <clears throat> if you own land and you have mineral rights to that land, always read your deed carefully because sometimes they'll sell you the land and retain the mineral rights. This is your wealth. This is why so much poverty. Because the ones that's in the know kept everybody else. <laughs> um, you have to uh, know how to, wealth is generated at its core. Labor wealth is generated through the exertion of physical activity. It's the same as a bodybuilder getting physically in shape. Um, national wealth is generated through the natural resources, or there wouldn't be natural resources and there wouldn't be national wealth. When the children are kept blind to the source of the income for the family or for the nation, then they don't know where they fit in economically and what bracket. So... When I first encountered um, 
messages from Mexico. It was three young boys that was falsely accused of rape. And none of them could have been older than 16. And um, they went to trick with a lady. And um, she wanted more narcotics after they tricked. And they didn't have any more. And so she called the police to charge them with rape. And then they came in where I was at in Chicago in the county jail, Division One. One of them was my bunkie. And he used to always make this joke with me. And we used to joke about it all the time. And it started off from saying, asking me, do I eat meat? He asked me if I, uh, he say, do masco de carne, which means do you eat meat? You eat the meat. And we were making sandwiches. And um, I didn't really know what he was saying, so I went and got one of the Latin folks named Tony, and I said, translate what he just said to me. So he said, um, again, tu masco de carne, you eat the meat. And, and he was talking about the packs of turkey and, and the ham. He was like, he, he wanted to know if you, when you make your sandwiches, do you eat this, this kind of meat on your sandwiches? So there was an implication in the translation that was not in the direct translation because when we went over it, I said, give it to me word for word. What is he saying? He said, through me and you, Moscow mean eat. Um, the carne mean the meat. So over the course of that, he ended up turning into a joke where I told him he eats steel. I saw him mean to Moscow, fiero. Fiero means actually iron. It's from ferrous. When you look iron up on the periodic um, table of elements, you'll see it says ferrous. Um, or when they give it to the women for um, prenatal vitamins, it's called ferrous sulfate. Um, then they got also, they got ferrous oxide, which they give it to you as a supplement, but you can't use it because it's already depleted. Any metal that comes in the oxide form is already used. Your body cannot use it. So when you read your supplements, you read about um, the metals. You make sure that they're not oxidized already because that's the method by which the ions and the metal particles are released into the blood to be absorbed. Yes, sir. So, um... In the Mexican-American War, some of Tupac land was divided up in America. This is, um, I don't really want to get into this shit today, but I'm going to do it. Tupac Amaru Shakur is not a regular motherfucker. He never was a regular individual. And his territory for his rank position and claim a right extends all the way from Alaska on the west coast all the way down through Washington State, Oregon, California, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, going into Mexico into Guatemala. He was named Tupac Amaru for a reason. And this is a, this is the Kindred connection. The Kindred connection comes from here. And um, I am called Quetzalcoatl, and he is called Tupac Amaru. Two different languages, but they mean almost the same thing. Tupac Amaru means um, the wise and shining serpent. Whereas Quetzalcoatl mean the great plumed serpent, the feathered serpent, um, which goes into me being the eagle clawed ape man, as they call it. And so, um, I got you, Chanel. So Tupac got a heavy, heavy, heavy influence from the region beyond what y'all can see with the naked eye. Um, when I encounter people who speak Spanish, be they Cubans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, uh, Mexicans, 
um, Venezuelans, Colombians. I've talked to them all. They all got the same grievance. So this is going to end up taking you into the drug trade because it appears to us, looking with the naked eye, that these Hispanic nations' only source of income is cocaine and um, the production of the coca leaf. It's not true. That's not even secondary on their income or their net value. What these people's source of wealth was before the refining of the coca leaf, they grew co uh, the best coffees in the world, the best tobaccos in the world. They produced the highest yielding sugar crops in the world, in history, right? They done all these things before they were invaded. They were able to do this, and they didn't do it as a labor. They done it as a part of a maintenance of family. They didn't do it as labor. They didn't get paid for labor. See, everything that we did before the invaders came, we did nothing for money, and we done everything for family. We done everything to maintain and support the structure of the family and the family values. Now, the family values are so few and far between that when you talk about family values, you automatically put yourself in the position to be looked at as a buffoon, an idiot, or behind the times, somebody who is out of touch with reality and don't really know what's taking place. This is how they paint us when we talk about um, all right, Juanita, keep your head up, sweetie. The struggle continues till it's over. And so they don't want us to know the source of the wealth is not the narcotics. So where is, what is the narcotics? How did it get in the picture? This started with conquistadors. They used to take the coca leaf to Egypt. And they use it for an anesthetic. And once you understand the nature of the thing, you know how to use it in all of its variant forms, if you know its nature. So the nature of the coca leaf is, has a numbing effect and a stimulating effect. So as an anesthetic, you use it as latocaine, uh, novocaine, and those type of pain relievers, what they call um, short-term pain relievers. And we all know... Anybody that's familiar with cocaine know that if you get a hit, you got to go get another one because it don't last long. That's the nature of the antiseptic or the um, the numbing effect of it. It's short. It's supposed to be a short duration um, treatment to heal shallow wounds. Just like you go get a shot of Novocaine to get a tooth filled. Well. You should just take your finger and rub it in your mouth and numb your gums with the powder cocaine. Or actually, it was the paste from the leaf. And it was a form that we used it. And this is why you find cocaine in the blood of the pharaohs. Not because they was ooting. They wasn't having cocaine parties over there. But the shaman would send for the shaman over there who they communicated with telepathically. Tell him what he needed. I need an antiseptic that performs in this manner. And he says, I have that antiseptic. So then you go tell the pharaoh, we need a pharaoh. We need some men to go to the island, um, to Turtle Island over there, to uh, a more Inca to pick up some coca leaf so we can numb this and fix this wound. And any other soldiers, especially when they're getting ready to go to war, they would stockpile coca leaf in the um, shaman's quarters to be um, made into... Um, medicines to be used on the battlefield these wars which is, comes all the way up to today to your afghan iraqi war to your most recent bombing in saudi arabia are all staged there has not been what you call a spontaneous act of war that did not have a minimum of two years of planning preceding it before it's taken place in the history of the world we go to war because that's how they keep us divided and conquered. The divided remains conquered. And so when the guy kept telling me, 
When I kept telling him, he kept asking me, do I eat meat? I asked him, do I eat metal? It was a joke. Well, I come to find out, when I started to research in the iron, the feral, I ended up with something they call a great iron bird. And I'm like, what the hell is the great iron bird? And the great iron bird is, in modern English, we would call it a slang um a slang connotation that identifies either the shining serpent or the plume serpent. But both of them would be referred to as the great iron bird. Not as an airplane, but the, the, they begin to call airplanes the iron bird to confuse you. That was done on purpose. The great iron bird that they speak of. Now, if you go look at the symbols, um, I think it's Albania. Armenia, um, it's a couple more of them. They have a double-headed bird on their crest, the same that the Moors had. The double-headed bird says that both Amur, um, Amaru and Quetzalcoatl, Tupac Amaru and Quetzalcoatl, were both conquered. Well, that's kind of difficult to conquer both of them while they're absent. The Tupac Amaru that you know of in history, the first was named after a deity called Tupac Amaru. The Tupac Amaru deity that they called a god over here was called Pharaoh Tuak Amen over there in the Afar Inca. He was called that and his father was called uh, Akan Aten which means he who holds the key to the eternal life of the known God. So when you hear the word Atun or Aten, it means the expression. God is being expressed. But when you hear the Amun or the Amen, that means God is being concealed, hidden. God is not visually present in the presence of the people for various reasons, and this one was Marduk. Marduk, exactly what you going to get. If you've been selfish, self-centered, and entitled, you're going to get hard labor. I'm going to tell you that all. If you selfish, self-centered, and entitled, your life going to be so goddamn hard that you're not going to want to be here. And we, we got a transportation arranged for y'all to get the fuck off planet. You can leave this motherfucker if you don't want to be on my watch, I'm not going to have no mercy. I'm not going to be nice. I'm not going to be kind. I'm not going to be compassionate because I got none of that shit. How can I give something that I never received? Only thing I ever got was spit on, stabbed in the back, betrayed, hung up literally by myself so that y'all can be free and y'all don't want free. Freedom coming, y'all motherfuckers fight that shit worse than the enemy fought y'all to be oppressed. It was easier for the enemy to oppress you than it is for the Redeemer to liberate you after he did the work. All you got to do now is just say, uh, I agree. That's it. We not in the I worship God phase no more. We all gods now, children of the Most High. We all got a right in this motherfucker. But if y'all don't change this shit, y'all going to mentally, y'all minds is going to cause war. But it's not going to be like it was in any war y'all seen. Because this one, if I had to start the war, I'm just going to end all the wars right there. I'm going to push every goddamn nuclear bomb button on this bitch. I'm telling y'all now, if y'all don't wake the fuck up and these countries start going to war... Every fucking nuclear bomb button on earth getting pushed. I don't give a fuck where it go. It can land in my goddamn lap. I catch that bitch. And if it don't explode, I'll pull the goddamn pin like it's a grenade. I don't give two fucks. As long as this ignorant oppression remains, we can blow this bitch to dust. We don't need to be here. If y'all don't understand, freedom is not free. You have to do something. All you have to do is agree to be free, you goddamn buffoons. No. 
So in Mexico, in Belize, they hide the black people from us. The ones that look like me that live there. It's just as many motherfuckers that look like me as it is that look like the pale man. You'll never know it. You'll never know that they was having Sambo uh, parodies in Mexico the same as they was here. That was all done by those same mulatto moors. Thought they was girls was cuter than everybody else and they men was more handsome because they was them yellow motherfuckers. I don't have a problem with that. I see beauty across the board. But I also see ignorance across the board. The saddest part about it is the people